Hello, I'm Duncan Greenwood and welcome to my second video tutorial on flower sticks. I'd like to cover in this lesson the details on buzzsaw fountains. They look a little bit like this. Um, it's a continuation of the tutorial I did last week on buzzsaw reels, which are like so. So if you haven't done buzzsaw reels, if you, or if you haven't done the tutorial at least, then I would recommend going and checking out that tutorial. I'm going to post a link somewhere around here. And um, yeah, do that tutorial, learn buzzsaw reels first, so that you can turn with the buzzsaw and then come back to this one so I can teach you buzzsaw fountains. Essentially, moving on, buzzsaw fountains are quite a simple step from buzzsaw reels. Buzzsaw reels go across the center, or actually go across anywhere. It's just any time that you're turning with the buzzsaw. Buzzsaw fountains are specifically when you're making a circle with buzzsaw reels. So you're doing it doing a buzzsaw up the top and going across let's try that again going buzzsaw up the top going across and then down and then across and then up and across and you can do that that was in spin you can also do it anti-spin down up across down up across and so on now um, I mentioned in spin and anti-spin in the last tutorial I made um, what I was saying is essentially if you're going from a backwards buzzsaw and turning into a forwards one, that would be in spin. You're going from a forwards buzzsaw turning into a backwards buzzsaw, that would be anti spin. Now, um, that's kind of just my opinion, really. The thing is that you're going in a straight line, so anti spin, in spin theory doesn't doesn't uh, apply exactly with a straight line uh, where it does apply though it's a more of a definite thing when it comes to fountains because you're making a circle with a compound circle that the stick is making the way it goes essentially is spin or in spin is where the object that you're ma manipulating in this case a stick is spinning in the same direction as the circle that you are making for its path, the path for its center. So the ends are going in the same direction as the center. And that is in spin or spin, normal spin. Um, yeah, that in this case I'm going, from my perspective, I'm going anti-clockwise in with the stick and also my arms. Anti-spin, on the other hand, is where your object of manipulation is spinning in the opposite direction to the direction that your arms are making the center of the object go. So if my stick is spinning counterclockwise, anti-clockwise, then I make a clockwise circle with my arms, and that there is anti-spin. So, now that that's covered, I'll go over the, some ways to practice doing buzzsaw fountains, although you could probably just guess from what I've just done. Um, in fact, you may well have guessed this entire tutorial just from watching the last one, but I'm going to tell you guys anyway. <laughs> so ways to practice, just do your buzzsaw, bring your buzzsaw up high and do a buzzsaw reel up there. And then go back. Oop, sorry. Up there and then back again. And then up and then back again. You can either concentrate on the in spin first by turning around and going up, turning around, or you know, anti spin first, whichever you feel like, or you could just keep the stick spinning in the same direction and go left and then right and then left and then right above you. Just keep doing that a lot. <laughs> and then obviously the down, the low reels. Oh, these are high reels, by the way. And these are low reels. So just practice your high reels and then practice your low reels, spinning either same direction, 
all the time or go with the in-spin, in-spin route or anti-spin, anti-spin route and just keep doing that. And then once you're comfortable with your high reels and your low reels, then you can link them together. High reel, low reel, high reel, low reel. And that right there is a fountain. A um, couple tips. Uh, one thing that you shouldn't do, it won't make anything any easier, is um, the way that I taught buzzsaw reels in the last tutorial is um, you're rolling the baton over the one stick, just like that. That doesn't really work so good when you're up there. It, it can be done, clearly, but it doesn't make anything any easier. So I would suggest going with the method of keeping your sticks, your hand sticks in contact with the baton at all times. It will make things easier for you. Um, another thing is keep your arms straight and your shoulders back. You don't want to be slouching, so you don't want to stretch your arms out forward too much. Um, but yes, keep your arms straight so that you can make a nice big circle um, essentially because your arms are going to keep a constant length you're not bending your elbows it allows you to make a more precise circle more per perfect circle which is better for things like um, long exposure photography with fire and it'll it'll make for a better pattern um, by the way this makes a flower flower pattern or a star pattern um, with a long exposure photography um, another thing is to when you go down you may want to bend your knees just uh, just to make that circle a little bit bigger another thing you could do is jumping <laughs> so when you go over the top jump a little <laughs> and then don't land like I just did jump, land nicely it's uh, not an easy thing to do but everybody likes to see more movement so I like it a lot um, another thing if you don't want to make the circle bigger what you do is make the circle smaller so do the bend your elbows break the rule I just told you now <laughs> and just play in front of your body like so And you can do smaller patterns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, um, yes, yes, <laughs> I think that's about it. Um, I may or may not say other things in the comments or something like that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna show you some slow motion stuff so you can get, get a grip on the finer details of what we're doing here. Okay, so I think that's everything covered. If you have any questions,
please leave comments. If you don't have any questions, then that's a good thing because I'm assuming that means that you've learned what I'm trying to teach here. Otherwise, it would mean that you don't care that much. And if you don't care, then I don't care. That's great. Have some fun. I'm gonna go play for a bit. <laughs>